President Mohamed Buhari on Saturday condemned the ambush on the entourage of Governor Zulum while advising the state government to remain firm in its determination to restore normalcy to all communities liberated from the Boko Haram terrorists despite the attack. In a statement by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Gaba Shehu, the SSA quoted the president as describing the attack on Meduguri Baga route as an orchestrated sabotage against long planned return of displaced persons to their local communities. And joining us live to discuss this is Kabir Adamu, a security expert. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Adamu. Thank you, Anita. Good morning. Right, diving straight into the matter at hand. What does this attack on the governor's convoy have to say about the state of security in Nigeria? I will look at it from two angles. Um, the first angle is the general security in the affected area, that is Baga. Uh, we know that um, there is uh, one of the major camps of the Islamic State in West Africa province in Baga. And we know that in July, when the governor indicated clearly that he wants to move the internally displaced person from Baga back to that location, uh, his convoy was attacked. And at that time, it came out that there could be two possibilities. It could be the military themselves or the members of the Islamic State in West Africa province. So that, that's one, that, uh, that location, Baga, uh, the general area of the Lake Tad Basin is vulnerable to that, that type of attack. So it speaks clearly to the fact that unfortunately, the insurgency is still active. The first thing I would like to speak about is the security arrangement regarding the movement of the governor himself. In um, uh, executive protection, we know that there is supposed to be an advanced team that would travel ahead, and make sure the situation in a particular location is safe before a VIP arrives in a particular location. So in this instance, questions have arisen. It appears it was an ambush, and one of the methods that they are, those that carried out the ambush used is to install a root planted IED in improvised explosive device. So how come that the advanced team did not take note of that root planted IED? The second component is what happened to the closed air support that such a convoy should have. By closed air support, I mean the Nigerian Air Force um, capabilities that, that could have surveillance capabilities and would see any attacker from a very long distance. And, in, and, and by doing that, warn the executive team ahead so that they avoid the, the attack as the case may be. Unfortunately, these two things that I mentioned, the general security and the security component of the governor himself, seem to have a lot of, um, you know, challenges. And you did mention something interesting, preempting a question I was going to ask you about if you will consider it an irony, seeing the amount of security detail that, you know, the governor goes with and how such an attack, you know, managed to happen. Would you then consider it an irony? Um, numbers in security is not necessarily, uh, you know, the, 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 it doesn't really make a security arrangement effective. It is not numbers. Rather, it's how you use those numbers. So yes, it appeared there was a significant number of personnel uh, providing ex executive protection for the governor. But I would say with all sense of responsibility that the deployment and the use of those numbers was not very effective. I mentioned earlier on that there should have been a bit of an advanced team um, in all executive protection components. An advanced team provides intelligence. It helped prevent the kind of um, ambush that we saw uh, two days two days ago. Um, I also mentioned the need for close air support or some form of surveillance, um, air surveillance capabilities. Now, those are not uh, issues that have to do with numbers. They are um, ways of ensuring the protection of um, you know, an executive governor. Let's remember that one of the cardinal objectives of the terrorist groups in the North is, is to establish their own caliphate. And how best can they do that if, uh, if not by making or killing, uh, you know, who, who political leaders. So if as a political leader, the governor is going to a place that is known to have the camp of the group and he's having this type of um, security arrangement, I think something is wrong uh, with whoever is managing, his, uh, you know, the close protection um, that the governor should have. Once again, it's not about numbers, it's about how you use those numbers. 
Mm. Indeed, you just mentioned that it's not about numbers. Uh, so then where are we getting it wrong? Is it in the area of training of these uh, security, security men? Um, training is one. Um, synergy. Uh, in, in this instance, we know there were police, there were there was the military, and then there are civilian J JTF components. Unfortunately, a lot of them lost their lives. Um, so synergy is, is, is critical, it's very important. And by synergy, I mean, how do they work together? Um, what kind of arrangement do they have in place? In executive protection, there are different types of arrange, arrangement. Um, by the videos I've seen, I, I do not think there was any strategic deployment uh, with regards to the synergy of the three major organizations that are protecting um, the, the governor. What of the SSS, the component that should have provided the um, intelligence so the next question I would like to ask you basically is that uh, time and time again, we've seen situations where a spokesperson of a Nigerian military will come out to talk about their successes and how much they've decimated Boko Haram. And in no short time, you find out that there's another attack somewhere. So how do we then translate you know, the words we're hearing, the words of assurance we seem to be getting from the reality we see on ground? Uh, the, the, for the average person in the Lake Chat Basin, what he knows is how he's able to move around freely or not. And in this instance, unfortunately, almost on a daily basis, attacks are, are ongoing. So no matter how the military says they've decimated or they've tamed or they've you know, finished or you know, annihilated, the members of Jamaat al Alifin al Dawatu al Jihad or Islamic State in West Africa province, as long as this type of attacks continue, the people would definitely find it difficult to believe this claim by the military. And how then can the military reestablish that trust, you know, in the words when they come out to say, you know, such an attack has been decimated or a group has been, you know, neutralized? How can the uh, military reestablish that trust and how can they? put an end finally to you know, the issues of security, Boko Haram, banditry, kidnapping, and all of that? In simple terms, the easiest way is to go into Sambisa Forest, the Lake Chat um, Basin Islands, and the Mandara Mountains, especially the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and arrest or kill the leaders of the two major groups and present them to Nigerians. I think that's the easiest way to establish trust. Anything short of that is just beating around the bush, un unfortunately. Hmm. And while, while we wait for that to happen, is it likely, I mean, it's the second attack now, is it likely that, you know, an attack like this might, might happen again? I mean, if it wasn't, if it wasn't checked the first time? Um, Anita, it's very likely. If I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet on it that it would happen again for the simple reason that we are not significantly changing the, the, our, our approach. Um, if you do not dominate the air, if you do not limit the abilities of this terrorist to move around freely, then they will continue to attack. And right now we're not doing that. So, um, yes, unfortunately, attacks on VIPs, including the governors, may happen if we do not change the way we're approaching security. Mm, thank you so much for your thoughts right here on News on the Hour, Mr. Adamo. Thank you for having me.